Hi Fox. How's your weekend been? Mine's been pretty good. Um, I was thinking about the um, when you're talking about um, sorry, I got a really sore wrist. I don't know what that's all about. It's probably a mouse thing, but it just catches me sometimes. Um, you were talking about the ego in your um, video from last Friday, which was great, by the way. Love, love hearing from you. So thank you for putting that up. Um, and that mortal thing about the difference between thinking that you're, you are your mind and your body's just a vessel or that you you aren't you without the whole kind of complete picture kind of thing. And um, yeah, what are you without your body, without the vehicle your brain moves around in? But I've been thinking, well, what, who are you without your memories? I know that, um, that when I got sick last year and um, it felt as if my whole brain was an etch -a sketch that had been shaken and I'd lost everything that was on the etch -a sketch. So, and then I had this very pinhole view of the world, very pinhole view that I, I because I couldn't hold anything in, in my memory and my temporal lobes, I couldn't hold anything in there. So everything I was experiencing was like, right now, <laughs> right now. Um, I couldn't carry anything till the next moment in the you know in the beginning, but that pinhole view that 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 slowly grew, and has grown to be the view that you know healthy well people have, and um, who am I? Am I my brain? Am I something? Anyway, I can't talk about this stuff. I I can't think about things like that. Um, well, I do think about things like that, but I can't really express them, and I can't. Um, I've, something I've always admired about you is the way that you can think about things and articulate them, and sort of extrapolate and pull them back in, and talk to other people about them, and make up your mind and have opinions. When I grow up, I hope to be like that. Um, not there yet, but um, I the the idea that everything's just atoms and we're all connected was something else that you had said in, uh, when you were um, talking about the subject. And it's actually uh, the thread that runs through a lot of science fiction movies, by the way. But that, um, that idea that we're all connected and that, that sort of we transcend everything and understand that is just truly horrifying to me. Horrifying. Because... Oh my God, imagine getting to the point where you understood that everything was connected and we are all the same and I am as important, or rather, that tree is as important as I am and those leaves and that rabbit out there on the lawn and all people are the same and everything, you know, blah, blah, all that sort of stuff. So then you'd have to do something about it, wouldn't you? You'd have to... You'd have to care about each other and you'd have to care about the planet and you'd have to care about the thoughts you have in your head and oh my god that's just isn't that too much it sounds like a lot of work a lot of work game of thrones finished and uh i don't know if you've been watching it or not something that was in the episode was um reminded me of bart and Bart always used to correct my use of less of instead of fewer Ooh. in sentences. I've since learned the difference between the two and when to use them, so I'm, I'm good. But I loved the scene in Game of Thrones when Davos became the person to correct Jon Snow's grammar. And uh, I thought you might like it too. How many men do we have in the north to fight in? 10,000 less? Fewer. What? Speaking of good hearts, Miss Sunday of North. I watched the movie Arrival a few weeks ago. Maybe, maybe longer. You know, time. Oh. Um, and I watched it again last night. And it was it's the same. It's just such a good movie. You know, such a good movie. But so I sat down this afternoon and I tried to figure out what is it about this movie 
that I really liked, that really like worked for me and what made it a good movie in my opinion. Um, the first thing I thought about was the pace of the movie, the pace of Arrival. It almost seemed like uh, a constant beat. It kind of didn't change. To me, there was a constant beat through the whole movie, like a metronome. Even through the tender moments, through the uh, more, maybe more trepidatious parts, it gets a little excitement in there. Um, it, just, it just seemed to have this consistent beat of time through the movie. I loved the way that Ian, the mathematician, grew to admire Louise. But you see them, or well, him grow towards her actually. She's going through her beast, through the movie, you know, but he grows towards her. He starts to care for her. The distance between him and her narrows to the point where there's a scene where he's worried about her. He's comes out, puts a blanket around her. You know, he's starting to do those tender things that we do with people that we care about. And um, and he's impressed by her. And she's impressed by him. She's impressed that he's not just all the maths that she thought he was. He, he actually figures some stuff out. And, and when he figures that stuff out, she's like, man, that's actually, that's quite smart. There was one scene there. There's plenty of scenes that were fantastic. But there was there's one scene there where, where Louise... Uh, goes back up into the alien ship um, on her own and she's no longer protected by her own atmosphere she is actually in their atmosphere or or at least a mixture of hers and theirs you can see that like the the sort of misty stuff in her eyes are kind of stinging that's what it looks like to me and she's having a bit of trouble sort of focusing and that sort of thing and um Again, the gravity goes weird. So she's, her hair starts actually initially, and you can see her hair starts kind of floating, and she realizes that she's floating. And then it, the camera pulls back, and it shows a scene of her floating. And what I love about that scene so much is she's like in camo pants and a cardigan, like the least floaty stuff. I mean, she's not pointing a toe. She's not all, you know, she's not a... She's not. She's an attractive woman, but um, she's no. She's not a blockbuster sort of ethereal celebrity that might have been sort of more balletic. Ba uh, I don't know. I just found that funny. I thought, yeah, that'd be right. If I got scooped up by aliens and was floating in the ship, I'd be wearing cargo pants and cardi as well, and my hair would be a mess as well as hers was and she hadn't worn any makeup as well I'd be just like oh that'd be right wouldn't it like this sort of tremendous experience of meeting another life form from another planet or galaxy or what or universe and I'm wearing cargo pants and a cardi um, she thank goodness she has a bigger brain than mine and that didn't really worry her that much she had other things to worry about like her stingy eyes and figuring out the puzzle and the puzzle the puzzle, the aliens know the puzzle. They already know the puzzle because they know time. They can see back, they can see forward, spoiler alert, they can see now, and they know that they have to go through the process of time to get to get to where they need to be, to get to be, to get Louise to where she needs to be, to get all the other interpreters and other people and all the other the eleven other spaceships to get to where they need to be to get to the point where we'll work together. It must be so frustrating for them. Instead of just saying, here's the language, it's a gift from us to you, it will be something we'll need, just hold on to it, we'll be back in 3,000 years and we'll we'll talk then. Um, and that other question in the movie, of course, uh, which was uh, a lot more subtle than that, if you were going, if you had a child and you knew that that child would die before they really became an adult. I knew they would die of a very rare disease. It would be a painful death, maybe. This question 
and you knew that was going to happen, would you have the child anyway? And and that was, you know, that was what what pulled um, pulled Louise and Ian apart in the end. That that um, he had decided that she had made the incorrect choice in that decision. She knew what the outcome was going to be, and she chose chose to go forward anyway, to go through that process, um, just like Abbott and Casello and their their uh, beings had done with them, gone through the process, you had to go through the process. I mean, uh, I guess it's like if you know the past and you know the future, what the hell's the point of now? If you just know how it's going to end. But um, very much like Arrival, going through the process of watching the movie, the actual film, is a wonderful process. I love Friday or even you know, at the end of the week and knowing that you're going to have a video there and setting you up on my big screen and putting my headphones on and listening to you talk to me. I love, love, love it. Oh, it's only like, we're only like four videos in, but uh, this is a good idea. A really good idea. Have a great week, Fox. I look forward to hearing from you when you have a moment to talk to me later in the week. It'd be awesome. Anyway, I look like some sort of ghost or something. And I shall try and have lipstick on or something next time, like I would if I came round to your house to visit you. I think that's like the sort of how I should think about it. Would you go to Fox's house dressed like this and smelling like this and looking like this? No, you would not. Well, brush your hair, Michelle. Brush your hair. See ya. <laughs>